All right, so let's move into how the world really works with money. Um, simple interest is nice, but if you use simple interest, you can extend a loan forever and really not pay that much in interest. Uh, most banks and car loans and savings accounts are based on what's known as compound interest. So I wanted to, you know, kind of uh, make an example of simple interest versus compound interest so you can see the differences um, that are inherent to both of them. Now, simple interest uses the formula I equals PRT. And initially, compound interest also uses the same formula, except for one major difference, is how the interest is handled and how the time is handled. So let's start off with simple interest. Let's do a, you know, an 8% APR of simple interest. And let's say we are going to save uh, $5,000. So I wanna look at it on a month by month basis of what's going on with this simple interest and then be able to compare it to our compound interest. All right, so let's look at uh, zero months. And I always like starting off at zero because uh, it gives you the initial balance. So this, there's no interest happening, and my initial balance on zero month is $5,000. All right, at the end of month number one, if our simple interest is an APR, then we're going to calculate our interest by principal times rate, uh, the rate being 8%, 8 out of 100, times time, and this is where it gets fun. It is one month out of 12, so this becomes 112. So the calculation, 5,000 times 8 over 100 times 1 out of 12, this will give me $33.33. So the interest earned for one month on this savings account is $33.33. And we're going to take that interest and we're always going to add the interest to the principal. So I'm going to add $33.33 to $5,000 and we'll have a balance of $5,033.33. All right, so then month two comes by. <clears throat> now month two, we're going to go I equals the principal times the interest rate, not much is changing, but the time is going to change. Now the money has been sitting in there two months and we're going to earn interest on it. So this would be two out of 12. So when I do my calculation, I only have to change one number. Oops. And we'll get $66.67. So this interest up to month two will have $66.67. And we'll add that to the principal which was 5,000, so now we have this much money. All right, and then month three, we'll go through the same thing. The only thing that's going to change is the two is gonna become a three, and we're gonna get $100. So here we're at $100 of interest. So that brings me up to $5,100. All right, so that's how simple interest works. You're doing the simple interest formula. The time keeps changing as we increase the months, and we're always adding the interest back to the principal. All right, let's see what the difference between that and compound interest. Now, compound interest, its main feature is um, interest increases your balance. And then also interest is calculated. on balance. So it's not going back to calculating on the principal. It's always working on the balance of the loan. So that's really important. Also, you only earn one period of interest. So where the time in the simple interest kept increasing, since interest is compounding here, we're finding the interest, we're adding it to the principal to come up with a new balance, 
And then the next month we're taking the interest of just the previous balance. So the time frame is always going to be one of. So in this case, it'll be one month out of all of them. All right, so again, I'll change colors here just to be stark. Zero month is gonna do nothing. We're gonna end up with $5,000. I'm going to do it at the same interest rate and everything. So we'll end up with $5,000, you know, how much money we put away in the savings account. And then one month in, we're going to do our simple interest. So it's going to be 5000 times the interest rate of 8 times 1 12th. It's one month out of 12. And we know the answer to this one. It's $33.33. So you're probably saying... Well, if we're doing the exact same thing, how are they different? Well, <clears throat> the difference actually comes in month two. So let's, you know, add it to our principal. So now our balance is uh, $5,33.33. And then when I get to month two, when I get to my interest, my principal is not 5000 anymore. And this is the main difference between compound interest and simple interest. We're actually taking the previous balance. So the balance is now 5,033.33, and we're gonna multiply that by eight over 100. But this balance, 50,33.33, was only there for one month, so my time frame is going to be one out of 12. So when I come over here, I'm gonna to have to trash the whole thing and start again. So it'd be 5,033.33, times 8 out of 100 times 1 out of 12. So I'm doing one month of interest on the previous balance, and instead of getting 33.33, now we're getting 33.56. So this is 33.56. So the total amount of interest I've earned so far is $66.90. Uh, 99 cents. No, 89 cents. <clears throat> All right, so then I'm going to add the 33.56 to my balance, and my balance now is 50, 66, 89, 66, 89. And you'll notice there's a slight difference between simple interest and compound interest now. The simple interest was 50, 66, 67, and this one has 89 cents. So it actually earned us more interest. So when we get to the third month, we're gonna go I equals, and our new balance is this. I'm gonna multiply by this, and then multiply by this. Nothing changes in this one except for the balance, where the only thing that changed in simple interest was the time. All right, so we gotta Start over again, so FIMS. Eight out of 100 times one over 12. 3378. Mm -hmm. So if I add 3378 to, uh, let's see here, 5066, 89, plus 3378, we get 5,160 cents, 67 cents. So by the third month, we're, earn <clears throat> we're earning 67 cents more under compound interest than we would have with uh, simple interest. So that is how compound interest works. Now we need to find a way to make it easier to work with because I don't want to do a table every time we come up to a compound interest question. All right, so now to the tricky part. We're going to build the compound interest formula. So it's going to require these variables. We're going to have P again for just the principal. Um, we're going to have this R represent the rate, but in this case, we're going to represent it as a straight decimal not the percent out of 100. So I'm going to have to change it to a decimal first. N is going to be the number of times we're going to compute interest per year. So for a normal savings account, it's usually per month. So then N would equal 12. If 
it was per week, then n would equal 52. Um, and I'll write these down on a, another page when we get to the, uh, past the formula. All right, so let's say we have the number of months is, oops, zero, and our interest is nothing, and our balance is P dollars. Now, it's really important to use variables rather than numbers because numbers can combine and simplify too easily for us to see the pattern. So to see the pattern, we need these letters, and we're going to have to represent things quite uh, ugly for a little bit. So under month one, we'll have our interest, which is I equals PRT, and we're going to add it to our um, principal. So we're going to go I equals um, P times RT. And in this case, um, we're doing this monthly because we're dealing with number of months. Our N is going to equal 12. And we knew from the previous example that um, the time never changes. So it was always 1 out of 12, 1 out of 12 for each one of the interest computations. So this is going to turn into P times R over 12 because, well, I'll do a little side note and then I'll erase it. If I have R times 1 12, that's the same thing as R over 1 times 1 12. And when you multiply fractions, you go straight across, so that's R over 12. So it's a neat little abbreviation. And by the way, in this case, with N equaling to 12, I can also write that as R over N. Um, but we'll come back to that later. So we get I equals P R over 12, and we're going to add that to our previous balance, which was P. So that gives us oops, P plus P times R over 12. All right, and then from previous examples, uh, if we factor out a P, we're left behind with 1 plus R over 12. And that would be our new balance if we knew all the numbers. All right, clean this up. So when we get to month two, and I'm going to color code this so you can see where all the pieces are coming from. For the interest, it's going to be the previous balance. And the previous balance was P times 1 plus R over 12. And then we're going to times that by... Um, Oops. And we're going to times that by RT, but we knew RT is going to be R over 12. All right, so the P parentheses 1 plus R over 12 is from the previous balance, and the R over 12 is the calculation that we're going to do to finish off the interest. All right, and then we're going to add that to the previous balance. So we're going to get P... Uh, 1 plus R over 12, that's the previous balance, plus my new interest, which is P plus 1 uh, R over 12 uh, times R over 12. Okay. And then, kind of like before, we're going to factor stuff out. So I'm going to factor out what's common, which is the P, the 1, the plus, the R over the 12. So if I kick him out, Remember, we do this with division. P times its parentheses divided by P times its parentheses is going to give us 1. The other one is going to cancel, and we're going to be left with R over 12. And then we can multiply those together and get 1 plus R over 12 raised to the second power. So this balance now becomes 1 plus R over 12 raised to the second power. And we'll move on to month three, and hopefully by then we'll know what the pattern is. Um, I'm going to get I equals the previous balance, which is P parentheses 1 plus R over 12. Um, and then we're going to multiply that by the uh, interest thing, which is R over 12. PRT. And the RT is just R over 12. All right, now we're going to have to take this interest and add it to the previous balance. So I'm really going to color code this one. So we're going to get P parentheses 1 plus R over 12 plus 
the parentheses, one plus r over, ooh, I forgot the squared, squared, r over 12 squared times r over 12. All right, and then obviously the red pieces are common, and I'm going to factor it out. So I'm going to have p parentheses 1 plus r over 12 raised to the second power. And then left behind, this is going to leave a 1. This is going to cancel and just leave r over 12. So when we get down to it, I have 1 plus r over 12 squared times another factor of 1 plus r over 12. That gives me 1 plus r over 12 raised to the third power. So you can see there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the number of months and the power that is on this one plus r over 12 piece. So here we have month two and the power is two. Month three and the power is three. So that's just the start of the idea. So let's jump ahead a little bit and let's go to month um, 24. Now month 24 we know is two years time. So if we get to month 24, something's going to happen in the interest, but I know my answer is going to be this. Now remember, the variables I want to include in my formula are all of these. So I have the P, I have the R, the N is the 12, and the 24 has two years in it, and that should be T. So the other number that's besides the 24, I can write this way. 2 times 12. So the 2 is the T, and the 12 again is the N. So my formula, my future value of my account, I'm just going to jump a few steps here, is going to equal 1 plus R over N. Remember, the 12 was N to begin with. Um, and I'm going to flip the order of the 2 times 12, is N times T. And this is the compound interest formula, where f is the future value, f is the future value, p is the beginning principle. You can also think of it as past value. r is the interest rate as a decimal. n is the number of times you compute interest per year. And n, of course, again, is the, uh, you know, those two n's are the same n's, by the way and t is time in years. So this is compound interest. So one of the most confusing parts about compound interest is this idea of n. So generally, you know you're in a compound interest formula if it has, you know, compounded, and it'll have a word here. And the word, if it is annual, then how many times a year is that going to be? Well, annual is kind of like your birthday. It's one time a year. Then there is semi-annually. And I really should say annually up here, but also if you see the word annual, n equals one. Uh, semi means cut it in half, so that's two times a year. Then there's quarterly. A lot of business loans work on a quarterly um, compounding. So quarterly, some people think of it as three because they think of three months, but it's four times a year because there's three goes into 12 four times. Uh, then there's monthly, which is the most common one, where n is equal to 12. Uh, then we can get into weekly, not so common, because this n equals 52 is an approximation. It's approximately 52 weeks in a year. It's not exact. Um, and then, of course, there is daily, where n is equal to 365. They kind of ignore leap year, but if you want to be precise, 365.25. 
All right, so that's the word you're going to be looking for. You see the word compounded anywhere in a statement, or if it talks about things with an L-Y at the end of it, time frame, annually, semi-annually, quarterly, you have to use the compound interest formula. All right, so let's do an example. Uh, here we have Michelle deposited $3,500 into an account that earned 5.4% compounded weekly interest rate. Uh, how much would this account be worth in 15 years? So it's really important, first off, to take this number and understand what it is. It is the amount of money that she's putting into the account. It is not the amount of money it is worth after a period of time. Most people get confused between the P and the F. So we're going to be really clear about which one we're talking about, because if you put it in the wrong place, you will get the wrong answer. So I know this is compound interest because it has this word in it. Um, it also has this weekly thing. So I know I'm going to be using this formula. And it is always best to write the formula down first and then plug the numbers into it. Because if you just start writing numbers into a formula, sometimes you're gonna put them in the wrong spot, thus leading to a wrong answer. So be really clear, write the formula first, and then replace the letters that you know and leave the other letters alone. So F, I do not know because that's what I'm looking for. How much is it worth in 15 years? So that's my F, but it's not the 15. That's, you know, when it's going to happen. So F, I don't know its value. P is the amount of money I deposited. So that would be $3,500. Well, actually, I didn't do it. Michelle did. Um, then we're going to get one plus. The interest rate is 5.4%, but it has to be written as a decimal in this case because then I don't want to be dealing with a fraction and another fraction on top of it. So R is going to be 5.4 divided by 100, which is 0 0.054 over. Now that N comes into play, and we concentrate on this word with the LY on it. Since it's weekly, there are 52 weeks in a year. And then N gets repeated here in the power. And finally, we get to the time, and the time is 15 years. And time always has to be measured in years. So if they gave you 15 months, you would have to write this as 15 over 12. All right, so then all of this can be typed into a calculator but before you do that, you have to be a little cautious. If you type it in the, exactly the way it looks in the calculator, this piece will cause an error in your calculation. So there's two ways to handle this. Way number one, type this into your calculator. Caret is for the raise to the power of. It's usually like... Um, near the seven on a calculator. And then in parentheses, you do 52 times 15. So it's really important that the 52 and the 15 go inside its own parentheses. So it says raise to this product rather than just raise to the 52nd. Um, the other option is to do this calculation first. So, you know, go off to the side, do 52 times 15, come back in and substitute that number in there. Sadly, my little write-on calculator does not like this big of an exponent. So I had to do this on a, my regular calculator. And I got an answer of 7864.37. So the future value of this account would be $7,864.37. Now, two things you should do right now. Pause the video type that into your calculator and make sure you come up with that answer. If you're not coming up with that answer, double check what you typed into the calculator. Most common mistakes are just silly ones like leaving that zero off, leaving that parentheses off. Um, I've seen people even multiplying by the n instead of dividing by the n because they're kind of used to the other formula which is 1 plus um, rt. Uh, but this is a little bit different. It has division. So double check your calculation and then come back and we'll finish off this problem.
Now remember, there's that, uh, what I like calling the common sense formula, that the future value is equal to the principal plus the interest. This formula works for simple interest, and it works just as well for compound interest, and it will work for loans and systematic savings, which we'll be doing next time. So this formula, being common sense as it is, shouldn't be that hard to work with. And we're looking for interest, so the other common formula is F minus P is equal to interest. And I know what F is equal to, and I know what P is equal to. So I get 7864.37 minus my original, well, Michelle's original, $3,500. So if we subtract $3,500, the amount of interest that she earned on this account over 15 years is $4,364.37. And this explains why people that have money can pretty much live off the money that they have, because then they can just live on the interest. We're talking millionaires could live off the interest that they earn on their money and never run out of money. Kind of scary. Alright, so here's another example, possibility, and it leans us towards some other things that we're going to talk about. So here I have Sammy is planning for retirement. She wants to have at least 60% of what she is currently earning um, in 20 years. How much will Sammy need per month in retirement if she earns $4,500 a month right now, and inflation is at about 3% per year. All right, so it's basically a two-prong problem. It's a simple percent, and then it's um, compound interest, but it's kind of a hidden uh, compound interest. So this 60% here is considered a flat percent, has no time requirements on it. So basically what it's saying is, she wants to do 60% of how much she's making right now, which is $4,500. So I just need to take 60% of $4,500, which would be $2,700 a month. So this is $2,700 per month. And that's how much she would need to take home. Um, per month after she retires in 20 years. Now, that's today's money. So as time goes on, I've said this before, money becomes worth less. So this compound that I was talking about is in this word right here. When you start talking about an interest rate per year, you're talking about an annually, uh, compounded annually situation. So we need to do compound interest based on that one little phrase. Face the NT. All right, do I know the future value of this account? Nope, that's what I'm looking for. Do I know the principal? Well, yeah, she wants to earn $2,700 a month. And then we have to compound the interest up to find out how much is it going to be when we're talking about 20 years from now. So based on inflation of 3%, this will be 0 0.03. Remember, you have to divide by 100 first. And since it's per year or annually, it will be one. And then we get one here, and time, of course, is 20 years. So after typing it into my calculator, I'm getting $4,876.50, and this will be per month. So this is how much she would have to plan on making or having available to her per month in 20 years. It's a lot more than $2,700 a month. And that's what time does to retirement funds. You have to save a lot of money over a long period of time so you can have the correct amount of money in a long period of time. All right, um, this is a little bit more in-depth type of example. Lots of words here. 
Uh, grandma has some money in a savings account that earned 4% monthly for 70 years. Um, one of her grandchildren is curious about how much she originally deposited. So how much was put away 70 years ago, assuming um, nothing more was put in, no more deposits, and there were no withdrawals from this account. So those two things are kind of important, that this money was like put away and absolutely forgotten for 70 years, which, by the way, happens more often than you think. All right, so again, we know this is compounded uh, interest because of the word. It, it, if it's not in there, sometimes it's implied, but usually it's in there. So I know right off the bat, I'm going to be doing F equals P parentheses one plus R over N raised to the NT. And yes, you really should write the formula down every time you're going to use it. All right, so let's rip this apart little by little. Um, when we talk about the amount of money that is in the savings account after 70 years, we're not talking about her initial deposit anymore. Secondly, the question is asking how much was put away 70 years ago. So that kind of gives us a hint that we have no idea what the principal is. So this $45,000 is how much it is worth now, future if you want to think of it. We're looking for how much was it worth way back when, 70 years ago, in the past. Another way of looking at this letter P, past. All right, so I don't know what P is equal to. And then I'm gonna get one plus, my interest rate is 4%. So that'll be 0 0.04 after you divide it by 100. And then N in this case is compounded, where's that other word? Monthly. So monthly being 12, and then it repeats itself as part of the exponent. And the number of years, we know that one, that's 70 years. So I need to type something into my calculator. Now we cannot type in a P into our calculator. So one thing you could do is type everything to the right of P into your calculator. So you can type all of this into your calculator. When you do that, you're going to end up with a decimal. So it's really important that you keep enough decimals so that your answer doesn't get thrown off too many. I highly suggest five decimal places. So I'm gonna type in parentheses, that has to be your first symbol. So you're gonna type in parentheses, one plus 0 0.04 divided by 12 caret, and I highly suggest you do 12 times 70 inside parentheses. So, so we get $45,375 is equal to P times this ugly decimal, so 16.368.25. All right, now to solve for P, we're gonna divide both sides by that number. So we're gonna divide this side by the 16.368.25, and we're gonna divide this side by the same number. And we'll get P is equal to the amount of money that she deposited 70 years ago is $2,772.13. And by the way, if you do this calculation, the answer doesn't come out to be 13 cents, it actually becomes 14 cents. And the difference was I kept the entire number in my calculator and that's what rounding does. It'll throw your answer off just a little bit. So this should be acceptable, um, whether you put 13 cents or 14 cents, because I usually have um, rounding error built into my questions. So if you think about this though, that's not a lot of money, but I guess 70 years ago, that was a ton of money. Um, but it grew throughout the years um, up to a maximum of the $45,000. That is the power of compounding. All right, this is just an um, example of what happens if we take N, uh, fix everything else, how much we're depositing, um, how much the interest rate is, how long it's going to sit in this account. 
Um, and I want to just describe changing how many times it computes per year, this interest, and how the value of n eventually really doesn't matter that much anymore. So for instance, here I have $5,000 um, that's going to be deposited. It's going to get compounded n times a year. So I have this little slider at the top of the screen. I'm going to pull that across, and n is going to go up in value. Um, and it's going to be done at 8%, which is a little excessively high, but I need that to show some things. And we're going to do it for 15 years. So all this does is calculate the future value um, of this account for 15 years, just changing how many times we're going to compute interest per year. All right. And I usually do this with numbers, but then the calculations get kind of just, you know, boring eventually. So I figured a graph would be a visual way of representation. So if we let n equal 5, then we'll have $16,443.65 after 15 years. So that would be five compoundings per year. It's almost like quarterly, um, but I couldn't get this thing to work otherwise for large numbers. All right, the next one up is 10. Ooh, look at that, big jump. So it went from a little bit below 16,450 to be uh, above 16,500. All right, so that was a nice big jump. If I go to 15 um, and 20, you notice these two jumps aren't as far. This one was a big jump, and this is a little tiny one. It's a little bit smaller. And as I take n to get bigger and bigger, the jumps from the previous one is shorter and shorter. So what's going on here is n gets bigger, the value of the account is getting a little bit bigger, but not by that much. So this is what's called a limiting factor. The value is approaching a specific one for when n is getting really, really big. So here we are, we're gaining maybe cents on the account. So we went from 330, we're at uh, $98.17. 330, ooh, back up, 335, we're at $98.21. At 340, we're at $98.24. So we're not earning that much more money for more compoundings per year, like most people would expect. It's kind of a cool feature. So this generates a whole new formula. So based off my graphical example, um, we're going to lean towards this idea of continuous compounding, where we're letting the number of computations get really big. And what I mean by really big is like infinite. Um, so we could do 365 computations a year, you know, daily. But what if we wanted to get down to like hourly or minutely or every second of the day? So when we get really large, we're even talking more than that. We're talking like a million times a year um, and bigger than that. So when n gets really, really big, then what happens is the formula that was compound interest, and remember that graph that I was showing you was approaching a specific value. Well, that specific value, I'm gonna write some fancy math here, as n goes towards infinity, um, becomes this number called e. Now e is just a number. It's kind of like pi. It's 2.7128 or uh, something really close to that. And a cool thing happens. The exponent actually um, starts including the interest rate. So this formula here is known as continuous compounding, also known as continuous growth. So this e is called the natural number. It shows up naturally for things that are growing on a continuous basis. Um, so it gets a fancy name called the natural number. Um, the key for the natural numbers on your calculator is generally located near this button called, oops, let's go yellow. It's generally located near this button called LN, and it's written above it as e to the x. Oops. e to the x. 
Okay. So to get to it, you have to hit second first, and then the LN button. And that'll put an E on your screen, and it puts the parentheses and the raise to the power automatically. So when you hit the button, you're going to get something that looks like this on your screen. And then all you have to do is enter the um, exponent, the RT, and you're done. It's actually quite an easy uh, thing to do on a calculator. All right, so for example, um, let's say $4,500 at 3.8% uh, uh, compounded continuously. And that basically just means it's always computing interest at all little small periods of time during the day. All right, so if it's uh, compounding continuously for, let's say, three years, then the formula, I just call it, I call it PERT. It used to be a shampoo. Well, maybe they still make it. It's a shampoo. Um, and we get F is equal to the 4,500. Um, e is just a number, so you just write E. Um, remember, it's kind of like pi. R is going to be 0 0.038 after you divide your 3.8% by 100. And then T is 3 years. So on your calculator, you're going to type in 4,500 times. Hit second LN. The button's called LN. And then that puts on your screen E caret. All right, so second LN gives you the E caret. It gives you a parentheses also. And all you have to type in is 0 0.038 times 3. Oops, and this is equal to the future value. So 4,500 second LN 0 0.038 times 3. And this will become $5,043.38. Put a little dollar sign out front there. And that's how easy it is to do continuous compounding. Um, we'll deal with this function a little bit more at the end of the course. Um, a subtopic of compound interest is this idea of APY, annual percentage yield. And if you haven't noticed by now, you need a scientific calculator to be able to calculate out compound interest because of the exponents and a lot of parentheses. So banks years ago um, came up with a way to make the idea of the interest from compounding to be simplified at least for one year. So basically, you'll if you go into a bank, you'll see APR and usually next to it an advertisement for APY. Um, and the APY is just to allow you to do a simple multiplication to figure out how much interest your uh, savings will earn in one year. So it changes the rate to be equal to a simple interest rate um, for one year. So the essence of finding the APY is going to be sol um, saving a dollar for one year. And it really doesn't matter what the interest rate is or what the compounding factor is. I'm going to leave those as um, variables. So we're going to have F equals P parentheses 1 plus R over N raised to the NT. Uh, and since this is the compound interest formula, and we see how complex this is, even just for a dollar, um, this idea of APY is going to become you know, beneficial for most people with a simple uh, calculator on their phone or something. So we're going to get F is equal to P is $1. R over N is not going to change. N is not going to change. But T is going to be one year, and N times 1 is just N. So the future value of this account literally is just going to be this amount of money. Now, if we're saving, or if we go to a grocery store and spend $1, and the tax... Uh, in the state is 7%, then you're going to spend $1.07 on that candy bar at the cash register. So the 7% directly corresponds to the decimal after a dollar. So when we figure this out, this is going to be one point something. 
and that point something is the important part of the decimal. So to find out what the APY is, we're going to take this answer, and we're going to subtract 1 from it. And that'll bring us down to the 0.07. But if we want to change it back into the 7%, we're going to have to take this whole thing and multiply by 100. So to figure out an APY, it's simply this formula. So the best way to figure out how this thing works is you know, to a simple example. So Marine Bank offers a CD that earns 4.5% APR compounded daily. Um, and then what would the APY of this CD be? Now, a CD is a certificate of deposit. They're almost like a savings account, except there's a penalty for withdrawing it earlier. And they're generally based on buying it for like six months or a year or five years. So if you um, withdraw your money from a CD early, there's just a little penalty to kind of um, make you want to keep it into the account for longer. And banks like them because then they are guaranteed this amount of money that generally is not going to leave their hands and they can invest it and, you know, make money. And therefore, the interest rates on CDs are usually higher than a regular savings account. All right, so let's get into it. The formula that we're going to be working with is APY. And it's equal to parentheses, parentheses, 1 plus R over N raised to the N minus 1, and then take that answer and times it by 100 and put a percent symbol after it. So when I put percent in parentheses, it means to include it. All right, so when we start plugging numbers into this formula, we're going to get 1 plus, the interest rate was 4.5%, so you have to divide that by 100 and get 0 0.045, N is going to be 365 because of that word daily. And then N again is going to be 365. Now remember, T is just 1, so it's just 365 as it's, you know, by itself as the exponent. We're going to take this answer, subtract 1, and then finally take that answer and multiply by 100 and change it into a percent. So after typing it into a calculator and rounded to the nearest hundredths, so I got 4.6 written down, but it actually is, if we want to be kind of precise, 4.60%. Um, putting this zero here just kind of indicates that I'm looking at the second decimal place and it rounded to a zero. Um, so if it was like 4.609, then I would write 4.61. Um, but generally, these are rounded to two decimal places to be a little bit more accurate with the percent. All right, the second thing I want to mention before we move on from this point is when you're using this formula, it's really important that you get both of those parentheses in order. So in your calculator, you have to type parentheses, parentheses. And it's also really important to end the parentheses at this location so that we include the negative one before we multiply by 100. Um, test this out, you know, type this in your calculator and make sure you can come up with 4.60, and I think the next number is two. All right, so let's see how this works in calculating interest. So let's say we're going to save $5,000 in the CD. And we're only going to do it, of course, for one year because that's how APY works. So let's do it with compound interest first, and then we'll do it with simple interest based on that 4.6%. So this is simple interest. And the APY that was given, this AP, oh, I'm sorry, APR, that was given at the beginning of 4.5%, this is compound interest. And there's a big difference between how we're going to deal with these. So the compound interest will go back to this formula. I'm just going to plug into this one since we already know most of the information. 365 raised to the 365. And then for the simple interest one, I'm going to use the simple interest future value formula. Why 
like that. All right, and then we're going to plug in, and we're going to have 5,000 here. One plus, and then the simple interest is 4.6%. So I'm going to write that as 4.6 over 100. And then T, of course, is 1, so it doesn't give me anything. So the left-hand side requires you to have um, a calculator that can deal with exponents. The right-hand side is just multiplication, addition, and division. All right. So let's see what the answers are for both of them. So 5,000 parentheses 1 plus 0 0.04565 raised to the 365. The compound interest will earn uh, $230 in some sense. And if we do the simple interest formula, 1 plus... 4.6 divided by 100, we end up with 520, uh, 5,230. So the only difference is the 12 cents. It's a little bit off, but it gives us a good indication of how much our account will be worth after one year with a nice, simple calculation that more most four-function calculators can deal with. And that is why... APY exists to make things easier for people.